Hey there, and welcome back to Eat the World. I'm Chef Alex Lazic. I've traveled the world and had a pretty big career, but I gave up the corporate world and owning my own businesses because what I thought was supposed to be making me happy really didn't make me happy. So I bought my beloved 2006 Fleetwood Bounder to travel around North America and have culinary adventures and focus on the things that do make me happy. So on this journey, I drove the Bounder to Northern BC and parked it and hopped on a boat that would take me about two and a half hours across the ocean to a super remote place to catch coho salmon. When I arrived, my first thoughts were how incredibly beautiful this amazing place is, which it really is. But I soon learned that it also had one of the highest concentrations of grizzly bears on the planet. And while I was there for the salmon run, all of the bears were at the river's edge fishing alongside me. So I got to see some pretty incredible sights and watch these animals in their natural habitat. This particular day was truly the beginning of the salmon run, where m over a dozen bears turned up to take their spot on the river's edge and do some fishing of their own. I had such a good time watching these adorable siblings having a wrestle on the lawn. I learned so much about all the different kinds of salmon on this trip. This incredible scene was taken of pink salmon spawning. Pink salmon are protected on this river, so we just observed them from afar. But what an incredible sight. So many salmon um, coming together, and uh, you can see why the bears aren't interested in any other prey at this time of year. So, shortly after arriving, I would make my way through the forest to this most amazing clearing on the riverbank. From here, the river opened up to the most picturesque, unspoiled, untouched, pristine wilderness. I made several trips to this remote spot over the summer to catch coho, and it was a successful season. I've never been salmon fishing before, so this was a new experience that I thoroughly enjoyed. I caught within my limit, of course, and Sued had plenty of wild salmon to take with me. I have a full video dedicated to just this journey on my channel, and I'll post a link below to it. There is so much more content on the wildlife in that video, including some pretty scary grizzly bear encounters. So please have a look and let me know what you think. Oh, and please, please, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm doing lots of work to make new and more interesting videos, and I could really do with the support. While I inadvertently caught a lot of pink salmon purely through their sheer numbers, the coho was proving to be pretty elusive at first. I felt like the few people that I had met had all caught one but me, but when the coho started running, there was plenty to go around. If you're into catching fish for sport, the coho really are a lot of fun, and I really didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did. But I think the combination of being in one of the most beautiful places in the world that I'd ever been and the excitement of the bears and the fishing made it a really unique experience for which I'm very grateful for. Look at the beautiful color of that. That's amazing. And here you go, here's some of my catch from my journey. So I packed up my salmon on my first trip back to Quebec. Three of the coho were frozen and I caught one the day before leaving and I kept it fresh. I wrapped each fish up with insulation and some ice packs and they were still pristine when I arrived here at the opposite end of the country on a freshwater lake in Quebec. Canada has the most incredible landscape from one end of the country to the other. There were no grizzly bears here, of course. Just one snapping turtle called Neptune lurking under the dock. But I love this place and what a great spot to smoke some salmon. So, first I was going to prepare the salmon that I brought back fresh. Please don't judge my filleting skills. I may be a chef, but this, this is not my strong point. It also helps if you have a good knife, a long bladed 
straight knife would have probably have been best. The closest I had was my German chef's knife. knife. Uh, it did a good job, but badly. So once the fillets were off, I had to tidy up some of the inside belly bones that I didn't quite get off. I have to admit, I'm used to filleting larger commercially farmed fish. These coho were definitely more delicate to fillet. So once those bones were off, I just tied up the belly and tr then tried to get out those pin bones. You can remove the pin bones with a good pair of pliers or tweezers. Again, I found these hard to get out on the coho. Um, this fish is particularly smaller, but the bones seemed a lot more delicate than what I would worked with before. So with this fresh salmon, I was going to turn half of it into cold smoked salmon or lox, and the other side I was cooking up for friends for dinner. The remaining frozen salmon was going to become hot smoked salmon. So I started with curing the lox. I use a 50-50 mix of brown sugar and coarse salt. Um, lay your salmon uh, skin side down on it. You can season it liberally with pepper and herbs if you like, um, like I did here. Um, but I like to keep it simple. Now I have to admit, in this version I am cheating, but cheating with a really good result. Cold smoking is very precise and I didn't have a cold smoker so I chose a very good quality liquid smoke. If you did have a cold smoker, I'd smoke it with wood of your choice for about two hours, but trust me, the liquid smoke version gives an excellent result. So sprinkle some of that liquid smoke on the salmon and rub it in, and then coat with the sugar and salt mixture and let that cure for two to three days ideally. With these smaller fish, maybe one and a half to two days, but, um, but you do want it to be nice and firm. I, I prefer the texture to be nice and firm so I usually leave mine for three days for a larger fish. Commercial locks will only have a very amount of curing and you can really tell the difference in the texture. So I personally find it inedible, but um, making your own is a lot nicer. The other side of the salmon, uh, I evened up the tip of the salmon fillet so you'd get like nice, evenly shaped, equal portions. If you're gonna serve it for dinner like I did, um, so yeah, trim off that top end and then cut them into equal sizes and try to keep the same shape as much as you possibly can. And here's the finished product of one and the other and so both of them got wrapped up nicely and placed in the fridge for later on. Now I've spared you watching me butcher the rest of the salmon but here we go on to the next steps for the hot smoking. I had limited fridge space but I had a cooler so I lined the bottom of the ice and I laid some wire racks down and then it was a simple process of layering your salmon sides covering them with salt and sugar mix, ensuring each bit is well covered and to ensure it cures nicely. Uh, I left the skin on, so also ensure the skin side has a nice coating of cure as well. Then you can stack them up and continue the process. You can see I added a tiny sprinkle of pink curing salt. This is a habit I got into producing commercial smoked salmon. I'll be vac packing these and curing salt is used to help prevent the growth of botulism which grows in inorganic environments. Honestly, it's a bit of overkill but I like to be totally safe.
Finally, I covered with insulating bubble wrap and put some ice packs on top and I set it aside for between 10 to 24 hours, but I would give it at least 10 hours. Once that is done, you need to wash off your salmon and pat it dry. And then you need to dry it until a, a, a layer of skin is formed or a pellicle. This is important to get the smoke to adhere nicely to the fish. You can place these in a fridge if you like, but I had a cold day and a fan that was ideal for getting this step done. You can see this shiny pellicle that's formed. That's what we want. So after that, all that's left to do is to rack up the salmon and get it into the smoker. Now you want to smoke the salmon at a low temperature over a longer period of time for the best results. This will retain moisture and have a beautiful flavor. I'll post full details on my website linked below. Now of course you can use any wood you like. I used maple on this occasion, but oak and beech also go really well with salmon I find. I left the vent open with no water in the water tray and then it was just a slow steady smoking for about four hours. And then I turned the heat up for the last hour to ensure that the correct final internal temperature is reached. Now I used an electric smoker, but you can use whatever smoker you have handy. You can use good old fashioned wood and a fire, or you can use a pellet grill, whatever you've got. Um, just follow the instructions for that for smoking hot smoking fish. Halfway through the smoking process, I glazed the tops of the salmon with some French mustard, soy sauce, and maple syrup. None of that is meant to be overwhelming, but just a nice light glaze to finish it off and add a little bit more flavor. Very subtle. And now forgive me for my crude glazing techniques. I um, couldn't find my pastry brush that I would normally use to glaze the salmon, so I uh, worked with what I had. So don't judge me. Once the hot smoked salmon are done, I recommend letting them cool slowly to retain their moisture. Never vac pack hot food like this. It will just pull out the moisture. So when these, these are cooled, they were vac packed and sealed and would keep for weeks in the refrigerator. If you're going to keep them longer, put them in the freezer or do what I did. I had some very lucky friends and family that I wanted to share the joy with. One thing I, I did make a mental note of for myself is I should have rotated the trays of salmon in the smoker so they had an equally nice finish all round. I made some fresh bagels and enjoyed my salmon with some poached eggs and spinach. Delicious. Once the locks are done, I like to slice the whole side up and vac pack them in two to three portion sizes. Have either the hot or cold smoked salmon on bagels or salad or sandwiches or anything you do with these is going to be amazing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Honestly, the quality of this salmon is far superior to pre-prepared salmon you'd get in a shop. So give it a try. If you have any questions, please comment below or you can go to my website, which I'll put the link below and chat with me directly. I'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe to my channel. I could really do with the support. Thanks so much for watching.